It's Tuesday, October 8th, 2024. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, just uh, more devastation taking uh, place in the southern part of the United States of America. Uh, gas stations empty as millions flee Hurricane Milton, as like many of you are doing today, watching uh, the news with this uh, brutal hurricane that is closing in on Florida. I, I was watching some of the videos of people evacuating Florida. Uh, it says here 3.1 million people uh, who live around Tampa uh, have now found out there is absolutely no gas left at the gas stations. And in fact, the gas stations were closing down yesterday. They're wrapping the gas stations up in, in plastic uh, and tying down the nozzles for what's coming. And people trying to get out now don't even have gas to get out. And watching the videos, the amount of people uh, exiting parts of Florida, it, it's absolutely staggering to watch this. The traffic, it just, it's unbelievable. And it is unbelievable that within less than two weeks, another hurricane uh, hitting uh, Florida. And I was watching some of the news today, and they interviewed this disabled man. He was missing a leg. He was living on a small sailboat, still um, in, in one of the uh, marinas. And he says, I have no place to go. I'm going to stay right here. And if, if the boat goes down, I guess I'm going to have to swim to shore. And he just says, it's all I have. I, it's all I have. And it just amazes me that we're giving people $5,000 debit cards, and we have disabled Americans uh, that have nowhere to go that literally would rather go down with the ship than to just leave. Uh, they just don't have the choices. I mean, it's just really, really sad to, to watch this, but um, we'll see how, how it goes. Uh, we have a good friend, uh, Blake, that is in the red zone down there. Blake, I hope uh, you're going to be okay. He's going to weather the storm. Uh, him and his wife, uh, all prayers to Blake. I hope everything works out. Uh, I mean, they're talking 180 mile per hour winds. This is going to be really, really bad. And they're just not going to get enough of the debris out of these areas. And this debris flying around at 180 miles per hour, very, very dangerous. Uh, and this is really Disgusting here from the Daily Mail. Despicable hotels in Florida and Georgia raise prices from $95 a night to $700 a night as desperate Hurricane Milton evacuees flee. Uh, Hampton Inn, Brunswick, Georgia. You can get a room on Wednesday night for $617. Uh, the Marriott, $548 a night with a two-night minimum. Normally $94 per night, but now it's $548 a night with a two night minimum. Also, a lot of these hotels are charging an astronomical amount for parking. These places never charge for parking, but now all of a sudden they're gonna charge, you know, $150 a night just to park in their parking lot. Absolutely despicable. Uh, this is terrible, terrible price gouging and greed. Uh, this should be completely outlawed uh, to, to be doing this, unbelievable. And please let me know your thoughts on any of this. Please comment down below. Uh, here's another one. The administration's deputies spend $750 million to settle migrants in North Carolina. But if you're lucky, you may qualify for $750. It says here uh, in the report, since 2021, $750 million of your dollars, your tax dollars, went to settle newcomers in North Carolina. And right now, the biggest project in North Carolina is a $536 million program to operate an 800-bed refugee reception center. How many Americans will be staying at that uh, refugee center during this emergency? Probably zero. Absolutely disgusting. And it just goes on day after day uh, with, with what is happening to these storm victims. And uh, my heart goes out to these people in Florida now that are evacuating. Uh, say a prayer for these people. And heaven forbid that uh, rain heads up uh, north into Georgia or, or eastern Tennessee uh, or, or North Carolina because they cannot afford to take another inch of rain. Uh, Florida's... Uh, Health crisis housing boom implodes as demand for property vanishes and extreme weather terrorizes newcomers. 
would you move to Florida after all this? There's a lot of people that are, are exiting California. Uh, there's people exiting Illinois, New York, uh, lots of places. Would you consider moving to Florida? I think a lot of people at this point would be like, no way, no way. Uh, how many people regret moving to Florida? Now look, it looks like a beautiful place. I know people in Florida, they love it. It looks beautiful. Um, how many people regret moving to Florida? Would they go somewhere else? Uh, and how many now are going to leave the state of Florida? How many people will just leave Florida? Uh, we haven't really seen the aftermath to these storms. Uh, we're, we're not going to for a while, but the devastation that this is gonna to reap upon uh, a state like Florida and uh, Eastern Tennessee, North Carolina, uh, with this damage. But Florida, as we enter the tourist season, uh, and, and how many people that we've seen move, millions of people uh, move to Florida over the years, uh, this is gonna reap absolute havoc on the Florida economy. And uh, we don't even know how bad this devastation is gonna be. We'll see how bad this storm is. They're talking about you know 15 foot uh, you know floods coming in off the coast of Florida, 15 feet. It, it's gonna literally wipe out houses in some of these beach communities. Uh, unbelievable what is going on. It, it, it's just unbelievable. Hurricane Milton could cause as much as $175 billion in damages according to early estimates. You know it's probably gonna go well over $200 billion. This is on CNBC. Uh, where's all the money gonna come from? America's broke. We can't even take care of the people right now that are in trouble because apparently we're so broke. Now I think there's money somewhere. Uh, they could get the money from somewhere. They always seem when they need to get the money to, you know, Ukraine, or they need to get money to Israel, or they need to get money to newcomers. There's always money uh, for for their causes. Uh, and look, look, I'm, I'm not taking sides here. Uh, Israel is an ally, no doubt about it. Uh, whatever, whatever your thoughts are on Ukraine. Um, at the end of the day, this is not political. At, at the end of the day, it is economic. And I just don't understand as a bankrupt country with, uh, you know, tr trillions of dollars in debt. Uh, what are we at? 34, 35 trillion. I can't even keep track of it at this point. Uh, how we're writing checks for billions of dollars, 8 billion here, 8 billion there. I, I just, again, doesn't matter if you're red, blue, right, left, middle. I just want to know how in the world we're affording to write these massive amounts of checks and we just cannot help people right here. Uh, Please comment down below if you've been watching the news, uh, if you've been watching the videos uh, on this storm. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Credit card spending growth is slowing. Consumers have been in a pretty frugal mood, expert says. This on CNBC. Well, this is what happens when 20% of credit card holders have already maxed out, tapped out their credit cards. There's nothing left. And of course, people are, are coming to the end where they just don't have much left on those credit cards. And so they're being much, much more frugal now. Um, how many of these storm survivors now are gonna max out every credit card they have just to eat, to put, uh, to go stay at a hotel, to pay bills? I mean, it's just, this is a real, real mess, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this was very interesting, uh, reading this on the Hedge today. Cybersecurity incident hits America's largest regulated water and wastewater utility firm. New Jersey-based American Waterworks wrote in the filing last Thursday, it learned of an unauthorized activity uh, within its computer networks and systems. Uh, the, the company has determined it to be the result of a cybersecurity incident. Uh, they provide drinking water to more than 14 million people in, in 14 states and 18 military installations. What are your thoughts on this? This is so dangerous. There's so much technology out there and we think that we're immune from anything happening right here. We have these massive floods taking place. We have another hurricane coming in, this major cyber attack. You start hitting water facilities, uh, one like this that services 14 million people. Uh, this would be a huge disaster. Luckily, it was caught. They were able to deal with it. But at some point, uh, somebody's going to take a major cyber attack and it's not going to be able to be stopped. They're not going to catch it in time. Could you imagine if 14 million people could not have access to drinking water, military bases, no access to water? Very, very concerning how fragile things are. Um, 
I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, there's something really, really odd taking place right now. Almost, I would say ominous with everything which we're watching with these wars, the economy, the condition of the average household in America, the massive amounts of debt, these hurricanes, the floods, uh, and how people are literally uh, being slapped in the face and not getting the service that uh, they deserve. They're really, really not. I don't care what anybody says. Maybe some areas are getting help and good for them, but there are so many people in so many towns not getting what they deserve, and it's absolutely insulting, but something is very, very ominous that's taking place. Um, and I think that for the people out there who are not paying attention and who are not preparing, they are going to really pay a severe price. So please be preparing, ladies and gentlemen. So much is happening and we're getting very, very close to a major, a historic election. What could happen leading up to that and what could happen after the election? This is getting really, really uh, wild. WallStreet.com, mortgage rates explode. Two-year and 10-year treasury yields spike. Monster rate cut hopes doused. Inflation fears resurface. Yield curves before and after the rate cut. 10-year uh, bond yields today back up. Uh, we're above 4%. Uh, 30-year fixed uh, mortgage rate right around 6.5%. Uh, this is interesting. 10-year uh, bond yield has spiked nearly 40 basis points uh, since August 8th. Uh, maybe inflation isn't going to sleep, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe the U.S. debt is a bigger problem than most people thought. Maybe most people working for the Federal Reserve thought. Uh, I think Jerome Powell made a huge mistake here. Uh, I, I think that jumbo cut, I thought they really thought it was going to do a lot more. But hey, markets are liking it. Uh, no doubt about that. But the economy, it's not doing anything for the economy. It's not doing anything for the consumer. It's not doing anything for the average household in America. In fact, mortgage rates are creeping up now. People are now on buyer's strike because of uh, because home prices are too high. This is according to Fannie Mae. You know, it cannot be a great time to sell your house. This is what they always tell you. It's a great time to sell your house, but it can't be a great time to sell your house when it's a terrible time to buy a house, ladies and gentlemen. 81%, this is on wolfstreet.com, 81% say it's a bad time to buy. Home buyers are no doubt on strike. And demand for existing homes has absolutely collapsed. We're looking at 2008 numbers, absolutely collapsed. Anybody telling you that this is a great time to buy a house, they're 100% wrong. Uh, anybody telling you that the housing market's doing wonderful, they are drinking the Kool-Aid. This is one of the worst housing markets we've seen in probably over 30 years. Uh, most thought mortgage rates would decline in September uh, when a poll was taking uh, taken by Fannie Mae. But mortgage rates have exploded. Inflation fears are now returning. Think about how much more we're going to pay the port workers on the East Coast, golf, okay? Uh, think about the cost of these storms, uh, the cleanup, what's happening in Florida today, the massive uh, debt, 35 uh, plus trillion dollars, uh, the ongoing wars that we're financing, uh, the millions of people that we've invited in here that we're paying for uh, daily. Where's all this money coming from? How can this not be inflationary, ladies and gentlemen? The debts and deficits are absolutely skyrocketing. There's no way uh, that inflation is going away. Now we're going to see that the wave of job losses continue and accelerate. And who knows what's coming next? I mean, it, I just cannot believe what we're watching and how unprepared we are to deal uh, with disasters here in America, uh, how things are just falling apart, airplanes just, you know, engines lighting on fire, you know, wheels off airplanes flying off, infrastructure falling apart, homeless people everywhere, yet we send billions upon billions of dollars to countries to finance wars, billions of dollars to take care of people from all over the world right here. Um, I don't know. I don't think this ends very well uh, whatsoever. Nothing is really uh, assuring me that things are going to be better because right now, in all honesty, and most of you, if you're being honest with yourself, nobody really knows who's running the country right now. Who is in charge of this country?
who's running America at this point? I mean, I'm really being serious here. Who is in charge of this country? Is it a person? Is it a group of people? Uh, I don't know. And if something really, really bad happened, who, who's going to take charge um, and protect this country? Because we don't even know who's in charge. We don't even have people that can help people right here uh, recover from this massive hurricane. And now we have another one coming. And we've been told, what, last week that FEMA's broke. And now we have a massive Category 5. Maybe They're saying this thing could go Category 6. I don't know. I'm really losing faith in this country, um, I, I, I'm just at a loss for words. Just watching, I, I think just watching day upon day of these videos with people in these small towns in the Southeast and the disrespect that they're getting and literally just being left on their own to, to fight for their lives, uh, sad. And look, I get it, there's areas that are getting some help, but I mean, they're not getting the help that they should be getting. And what about the areas that are not? And how did this even happen? I don't know. I don't know. Don't have the answers. There's just, there's a lot of speculation out there. There's a lot of theories out there. We'll let the dust settle. We'll see how it all plays out. Uh, let me know your thoughts on, on any of this. It's really, to me, a sad time in America. I've never seen this country in such bad shape. I've never seen the economy in such bad shape. And, and I've just never seen uh, the American people treated so bad. So bad. I'm going to leave it there today. I, I don't really have really much to say other than uh, my heart goes out to these people. Uh, we're being lied to about, I, I think, a lot of things about really the condition of our economy. We keep, we're, we're re, it's repeated every day how great it is. But from what I can see, from what you can see, it's not doing so well. We're being told the housing market's doing well. It's not. We're, we're told that, you know, there's all these great jobs out there, but, you know, people are losing their hours. The sort of jobs that we have out there, we're not manufacturing, we're not making uh, things. Uh, those factory jobs are gone. And so people are working fast food, they're working leisure, hospitality, they're working, you, you know, in, in, in the health field, low paying jobs. Um, I don't know. I don't know how we survive as a country, a country that just consumes stuff with a dollar that continues to lose purchasing power, uh, a country where 80% of our people are, are working paycheck to paycheck and have massive amounts of debt, and where we have home prices, you know, literally uh, five to 10 times what a household income makes. It's unsustainable, ladies and gentlemen. This whole thing. Uh, is unsustainable. The debts, the deficits, the housing market, the stock market, all this is completely unsustainable. And I hope you're all paying attention. It's never been more important than right now that you're paying attention and really watching this with both eyes and listening with both ears what's going on and listening to your gut, uh, listening to your conscious, because uh, there's something very, very ominous taking place. And if you're not preparing, if you're not walking close to God, you're going to be a victim of this. Uh, prepare the best that you can. Um, just really, really sad to see what's happening to people out there. Talk to all of you soon.